You may be seated. Good morning and welcome. My name is Amanda Floyd, one of the pastors here at Trinity, and on behalf of Pat's family, I want to welcome you this morning. Gathering in such a way to accompany another human being on the last flight of a life's journey is a sacred act, and I believe that all of us are standing on holy ground as we accompany Pat and we entrust her to God. Just a few notes about the end of our service. Immediately following the service today, everyone is invited to join the family in the fellowship hall right across the narthex uh, for a time of togetherness, uh, memory sharing, and a great meal. So please stay. We begin our worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you today our sister Pat. We thank you for giving her to us to know and to love as a companion in our pilgrimage on earth. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Illumine our lives so that we may see in death the gate to eternal life that we may continue our course on earth in confidence until by your call we are reunited with those who have gone before us. For your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our first reading today comes from Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time on and for forevermore. Our second reading comes from the beloved Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in my paths for his name and sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me, your God and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies, you anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Our third reading comes from Ephesians chapter 3. For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. I'd like to invite Ashley and John and Jane to come forward now and share some memories of their grandmother and their sister.
We were so lucky to have Grandma for as long as we did. She was someone to truly admire. The list of things that I learned from her is endless. One of the things that I can say that she taught me is, it is, is that it's important to have a strong faith. I attended many Sunday services here at Trinity with her and my grandpa. Those were great childhood memories for me. They were very involved in their church here at Trinity. She just loved it here. She always raised her hand to help with church cleaning. I helped a few times and she would say, you have to do your part. This is a day I've dreaded for a while. The babysitter finally came by. To the group that's held this wonderful family together for so long. As long as I can remember, Grandma could be described with one single word. That was magical. Everything from her larger than life smile and laugh to her unique. moments magical, and most importantly, she always made them special. Holidays will be forever some of my favorite memories. 
from Grandma and Grandpa. The house would always look and smell like something you'd see on the Hallmark Channel. But with all that, with all the feelings of love, family, and togetherness. All of our yearly trips to the Twins games, to the Como Zoo, to touch that oh, snake. <laughs> Creepy snake. Uh, the first ever sub sandwich I had was up here in Motown with my grandma. Put long tuna fish. <laughs> Shopping for pants at Walmart, and then Grandma guided me over to the uh, Husky Boy section after I tried on <laughs> five years in the regular section. Yeah. And also, for kindly of telling me that I had to step away from the invitation crab at their anniversary party because there are other guests that wanted to enjoy it too after I ate half the plate. <sighs> but she always said it's a nice, kind way of, of saying things. Still to this day, it makes me laugh. I tell that story all the time. <sighs> yeah, and these were the reasons why you always had butterflies in your stomach whenever you knew you were going to see Grandma and Grandpa's house. You are going to Grandma and Grandpa's house. They always made it feel magical and special. So I want to thank you, Grandma, for the 43 years of great memories, the invaluable advice spoken for me. Your expertise in showing us all how to persevere through the adversity which most people will never face. All while, all while maintaining your faith and positive outlook on life. When it came to grandmas, uh, we were truly blessed with the best. We love you and miss you, Grandma. But we have comfort knowing. That you're in heaven with Grandma, or Grandpa, and Uncle Tom. Continue watching over us, and we'll continue looking up at the stars for some guidance. Until we meet again, love you forever, and I'll meet Gigi. Um, today, I have just shared some things that were written by the people from Omaha that couldn't be here. I um, had one sister. And they were very close. Um, and Shar had found this poem. And it says, Sister written on my heart. She was the bridge to my childhood, the other half of my heart. We shared young girl secrets and grown up dreams. We were connected by family, but bound by love. She listened and understood it, and I thought about her every day. Her smile lifted me up, her arms held me close. Her legacy was the beautiful soul and sister she was and the love she left written on my heart. Ends it with love, Sherry. And then um, my cousin Cheryl had written something. Our Aunt Pat was more than my mom's sister. She was like having a second mom. She was a confident, a supporter, always laughing, quick with a smile, and filled with love and humor. She made sure we all knew the importance of family, and all of them would uh, work real hard to get together every chance we could to make solid memories. So much of all of our growing up is flooded with love, gratitude, and joy to have had her as our aunt. 